Hey students, this is lesson 632, part 2. On, in today's lessons, we're going to learn how to write rules in function notation. In function notation, you read, uh, that, that's function notation, and you read that as f of x. You can think of the value of f of x as another way of writing y. So in simple terms, if we had an equation like this written in slope-intercept form, We'll now write it like this, knowing that it's a function, and that's function notation. The f of x is just replacing y, and the only thing it's telling us is that the number in parentheses is the input, the variable in parentheses is the input. Um, so the way you should write, uh, the way you would read that function notation is h of g. That's the way you would say that. Okay? Um, function notation will always have um, parentheses in it to represent what the input variable is and then equaling something. So that's function notation. Um, so which of these represents a function that calculates the cost of peaches? And usually the letters represent something. In this case, the letters represent cost, and then P represents how many peaches. So um, if they cost 25 cents each, we know we want to multiply 25 times the number of peaches we buy. So this is the, the equation written in function notation. And just uh, a review of what function is and written in a different way. It is a rule that takes an input and does something to it and gives a unique corresponding output. So there can only be one output for each input value. Uh, and uh, what exactly is f of x? f of x is the output, the rule that gives the output for a function. And the input is x. So f of x is the output, and x is the input. as the input. All right. And uh, so evaluating a function is just like evaluating an equation. When I say f of 2, what I'm saying is 2 is the input, so we're going to put 2 for every x in the equation and then evaluate that. So if I put 2 in for x here, I get 2 squared, and I'm going to put 2 in for x there, and then we have to subtract 1. And so 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1, and that equals 7. Um, now this is a different input. Now we're going to put negative 3 in for x. Uh, and we, we show that we're putting in negative 3 for x by putting negative 3 where the x is in the function notation. And then so we need to do, we need to put negative 3 where the x is, negative 3 where the x is there, and then evaluate it. Negative 3 times 3, negative 3 is 9. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then when we evaluate that, simplify it, we get 2. All right, so we're going to do a couple of those. Uh, I'll do one more here with you. So, so they figured out f of 2, which means here's f of x. So we substituted 2 for the x. And then in the second one, they are using this function, g of x. And you can tell that because of the letter g. And we're substituting 2 for x here and evaluating it. Let's do one more. Let's do g of negative 5. And since I'm doing g, I want this function. And so where I have x in that function, I'm going to put negative 5. Now, this is important that if you're going to do this on your calculator when you have negatives and you square them, you have to use the parentheses. Uh, and then we're going to subtract 3. And negative 5 squared, that means negative 5 times negative 5. That's positive 25 minus 3. And that's equal to 22. All right. I'm going to skip a couple. Uh, I want to do this in class, getting used to function notation. So I'm going to skip that one. And we're going to go on to the next page. Okay. You have seen functions represented as equations. Um, this is an example of function notation, again, of a linear equation. So the t represents the output. In this case, t is how many words Rachel can type. x is the input, which represents 
the uh, number of minutes that she types. So how many words can she type in seven minutes? That means we want to find t of seven. In other words, the function t when the input is seven. And to do that, we're just going to substitute right here's where the x is. We're going to substitute seven for that. And then we're going to evaluate that 65 times seven is 455. And then we're just going to say, now we know that, and what this represents is how many words Rachel can type in seven minutes. And so Rachel can type 455 words in seven minutes. All right. Uh, number three here. Uh, go ahead and you do this, and uh, I'll pause it right now, and you can try it. See if you can come up with the reasons here, and you can check back with your answers. All right, how'd you do? Um, so with function notation, you just take the function, and whatever x is in the parentheses, that's what you're going to substitute into the equation for x, and then evaluate that. All right. Next thing we're going to do is um, learn a couple ways of determining whether a relation is a function. Okay, um, This is just a review of some of the words we've been talking about here and a review of a way of dealing with functions. This is called a function machine, and you've seen these before. You just take some input, put it in here, and um, and then use a rule to do something to that input and then it comes out as the output. So go ahead and see if you can figure out which of these words go in which blank. A um, couple new words here. Domain is the way that you, uh, what you call the input when you're dealing with a function. And range is what you call the output. So those new words are given to you right here. There's the domain, it's the input. And you should put range over here for the output because that's another word that means the output. All right, you can try the rest of the words. All right, um, one way that we can identify func functions is by using a mapping diagram. That's what this is. And um, I have jars here, but what I'm going to do is use one jar to represent my inputs or domain. And that's my x values. And then one jar to represent my outputs, which is my range or my y values. So I'm going to look at these points, and I'm going to put every possible input value in my domain jar, and then every possible output value in my range jar. So my inputs are negative 3, 0, 1, and 2. And my possible outputs are 1, 2, 1, and 4. So they're 1, 2, and 4. I don't need to write 1 twice. Then I'm going to draw an arrow from um, that math matches up these points. Negative 3 goes to 1, 0 goes to 2, 1 goes to 1, and 2 goes to 4. Now we want to know if this relation is a function. The way we'll tell is if there's two arrows coming from any input value, then it's not a function. And so negative 3 has just one arrow. 0 has one arrow, 1 has one arrow, and 2 has one arrow. So this is a function. And that's because um, there's one unique output value for each input value. All right, and uh, let's try the next one. I'll let you go ahead and try that. Put every possible input value in the first one for x, that into your domain jar. Put every possible output value in your range jar, and then draw arrows that represent the ordered pairs. I'll let you go ahead and try and do that, and you can check back with your answer. You should have said that this is not a function, and the reason it's not a function is if you look closely, 5 has two arrows come going from it, from it to two different output values. And you can only have one output for each input, so this is not a function. So a mapping diagram like that is one way to determine if something is a function. Okay, another way to determine if something is a function, I'm going to let you uh, 
We'll do this problem in class. Another way to decide if a relation is a function is to analyze the graph of the relation and use a thing called the vertical line test. If any vertical line passes through more than one point, then that means that for some domain value, there is more than one range value, so the relation is not a function. So we're going to go ahead and graph this, and uh, I'm going to do part B here. We'll do part A in class, but part B, we're going to create some values for that. Um, so let's let let's choose some values for x, and I think we should choose these values that are on the graph. And so our domain values are negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then to find our range value, we're going to have to use this function, 2 times x squared plus 1. So we're going to have to do 2 times negative 4 squared plus 1. Now remember, if you do that on your calculator, you need to multiply negative 4 by itself, which is positive 16. 2 times 16 is 32 plus 1 is 33. Go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. I'm going to pause here and come back to you when I have the values. Okay, so when we graph this, we get a parabola. Now the vertical line test, I'm just going to take a vertical line and I'm going to move it onto this function. And if I find a spot where that line crosses the graph more than one place, then it's not a function. So if you think about that, right now it's intersecting it in just one place. And no matter where I am, it intersects it in only one place. So when, if that happens, then it is a function. So we're going to say, yes, this is a function. All right? Um, Let's do this one together. Go ahead and plot those points. I'll pause while you do that, and then we'll talk about um, whether or not you can draw a vertical line to intersect this in more than one spot. Okay, so now we're going to take a vertical line, and do I hit more than one point with this vertical line at any place where these dots are on this graph? And the answer is no. Um, if, and this point isn't one of them, but if there was a point here, then we then we would say the vertical line is hitting two points. And in that case, it would not be a function, but that doesn't happen. So can you draw a vertical line that intersects more than one point? No. Nope. Is the relationship a function? Yes, it certainly is. All right, we're going to do these in class. Okay, one more thing we're going to learn about is finding the range. Um, and the range, remember, is the output. So we have to do here is find the output for inputs of 1, 2, 3, and 4. The easiest way to do that is just to make a table of x. And instead of y, I'm going to put f of x, so the value of the function. My domain is my x value, so I'm going to put 1, 2, 3, and 4 here. And then my range is the output values. So to find those values, I need to use this function and do 3 times x minus 2. So in the first one, I'm going to do 3 times 1 minus 2. And that's 3 minus 2 is 1. The second one, I'm going to do 3 times 2 minus 2, switching the input to 2. And that 6 minus 2 is 5. And then 3 times 3 minus 2 equals 7. Then 3 times, whoops, I did that one wrong. I hope you got that. 5 should be a 4. 4, 7, and 3 times 4 minus 2 is 12 minus 2 is 10. All right? So my, out, my range values are these. D. Go ahead, you try that, and the rest will do in class. All right, check your answers. And the last thing is, um, this the error that this student made, the error is saying that this is only intersecting the graph in one place, so it is a function. The thing that this student didn't do is check the graph in every place. And if you think about right here, it's actually crossing this graph in three places. So this is definitely not a function because there's more than one input, output for the an input there. All right. That's
that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.